In this garden, and in the house almost hidden within it, one finds the home base of a photographer, Dorothea Lang. Her name is listed among the masters of photography, but this is not about photography. It is about Dorothea Lang, who in her long, rich, and frequently painful life has used the camera vastly to enrich our perception of ourselves and of the human condition. How do you tell others about what you think is worth telling? What you have either discovered or uncovered or learned or been endowed with in one way or another, then what you think is meaningful, not moral, but meaningful, if you have been fortunate enough as, uh, to have an instrument that's flexible for these purposes, you try, you find your way. And no one can assure you where you've been successful and where you haven't. You never really know that. But that's what the job is. What you hold on to it is a revelation to you in itself. Some things you are ready to, to say, this served its purpose, this is now over, this is final. All of this to a person with a sense of time. This is wartime. Closing days of the war with Germany, end of the Roosevelt era, opening of UN conference. And this is where, right in here is where I, where I stopped. I didn't work for three years, I think. That finished it. Not, it wasn't the conference that finished me, but I, I, I couldn't go any further. It was a very exciting thing, and it, oh, it hurt me very much. For the past 20 years, all that Dorothea Lang has done has been under a deepening shadow of illness, until... August, I was told at Kaiser that I have cancer of the esophagus, and so I work for the exhibition and contemplate things as they are. The Museum of Modern Art invited Dorothea Lang to prepare a major exhibition of her work, and she accepted. This meant, however, giving up a cherished project for Look magazine, photographing at the family cabin fronting the Pacific, photographing the family. Not a summer cabin, much more elemental, a protection from the wind and weather, one board thick, and it shakes when the ocean is high and it beats on the rocks, that cabin shakes and you feel every wave. And the children respond to that, so they get elemental too. We found that we could spend very good weekends there, Paul and I, taking the grandchildren there. Then I began to wonder what it was that made us all feel the minute we went over the brow of that hill. A certain sense of um, not peace particularly or enjoyment, freedom. Then I thought I could do a real sequence, series of photographs and the subject of freedom, of which the cabin would be the device. I don't want to build up this idea of this story of the cabin to be anything greater than it is accepting that it really took hold of me. And I really think 
tell you the truth, I would rather do this story of the cabin than do my big show at the museum. I would rather do it. I mean, that's the well, thing I would like to do. The, uh, the other goes back uh, and is making use of materials that I have already approached, just approached. To prepare for the exhibition meant that a lifetime of work must be examined negative by negative, print by print. Born in 1895, Dorothea Lang decided to become a photographer at the age of 17. At 20, she set out with a friend to photograph her way around the world, but she became stranded in San Francisco, and a year later she opened a portrait studio which, over the years, prospered. But in the 1930s, in the years of the Great Depression, Dorothea Lang's attention shifted literally from the studio to the street. She was hired by the economist Paul Taylor, who sought to use the camera as a research tool. Their first work together was a study of migratory labor in California. Soon thereafter, Dorothea Lang became a part of that remarkable group of photographers working under Roy Stryker for the Farm Security Administration. Here we have this one that I can't remember. I know it will show up, I know it's cotton, and I believe it's Texas. I am quite sure it's Texas. Let's put it in Texas for the time being. The FSA file represents perhaps the highest point yet achieved in documentary photography. Not good enough, Dorothea. Well, that's better. You know, I got A for effort on this, but not for <laughs> sometimes, just A for effort, that's all. But here's one. In 1940, Dorothea Lang continued to work for the government, photographing the conditions and problems of farm workers for the Bureau of Agricultural Economics. In 1941, she began work under a Guggenheim Fellowship, but then came Pearl Harbor and the war, and photographs for the War Relocation Authority. In 1943, she worked for the OWI. 44, I worked for OWI where there are no negatives here. 45, I worked for OWI and then went to the hospital. See, up to that time, there was no illness. That starts right there. And we are through that box. And I feel as though I've made a visit. I feel as though I've gone back on a trip. And I'm going to stop for a few minutes right. and see. I'll just sit over here for a minute. Oh, boy. Ah. Oh, my. 46 a total loss. 47, we'll see. I didn't know I was going to let it go. Exhausted and under constant medication, every hour spent in reconstructing the chronology of her life's work cost much. I have one round exhibit in the museum of my art in 53. 53 I went to Utah. 54 I went to Ireland. And 55 I went back to the hospital. At the end of 55 I started the public defender. This man is the judge in the Superior Court where I tried to make photographs which showed what a man does and what he encounters when he's public defender. The nature of the job is what I tried to describe. 58. I went on a trip around the world and I said to the doctor, shall I go? And he said, what's the difference whether you die here or there? Let's go. 61, I worked with remembrance of Asia. 63, I was in Egypt and Syria and back to the hospital. I would very much like 
to avoid it. And on the other hand, I feel I can't. I must do it. Get that exhibition together and put it on the wall for other people to look at, which will spell out what I would like to speak about in photography. Your working methods are not likely to get the job done. I well know it. One of the first people Dorothea talked with about the exhibition was her son, Dan Dixon. I know. They come, I know. And I think maybe the time has come now for you to make some decisions. And I well know. Okay. It is not really modesty on my part. Don't mistake it. I know that. It's not modesty. I it's that, that I'm afraid. I know that. I'm afraid. Uh, you know, one's photographs really I mean in, in a case like mine when you've been a photographer all your life uh, there is no ducking and that that's where the content is the time for me is past to do what is called the documentary thing I have done that but out of those materials, I want to extract the things that are the items that are, in a sense, I don't know, sublimations is the way that comes to my mind. Give me another. An essence of a situation the universality of the situation, not the circumstance. I have a million things to do. A million. I never have had so many things to do. And I've been busy all my life. <laughs> really busy. But busy and working is different. Often we keep ourselves yeah, darn busy so we don't have yeah. to work. Right now, it's guesswork on my part. Guesswork plus fear is a bad combination. I can't cut out the fear, but I can cut out the guesswork. Period. John Z is coming on Tuesday. John Zarkowski, curator of photography for the Museum of Modern Art, right. scheduled a visit to the Lang Taylor household in Berkeley, California. In the meantime, the print selection and the thousand and one other activities in the house continued. Well, let me refer you a knife. Where's the cheese? Is it cut up? It's in the soup. Oh, it's already done? Oh, I was going to do you, give you a hand on the cutting of the cheese. The fact that I'm getting the things ready for the show gives me an added incentive. And some things are better than I knew. You ask yourself kind of questions like, why was I working so well that two weeks? And then all of a sudden, no good at all. What was it? Was it the weather? Did I get tired? That was better? Or did it go back? It's just very curious. It's I'm just really beginning to sense what's in this medium. I go over, as I've been doing lately, my old negatives over different periods for the show. And my, how, mu how much I could have made of the things I actually did had I understood those negatives as well as I understand them now and the different choices I would have made. Things I passed by now with very little interest that I once thought were the good ones, that I stop short at some and look and look at them. And I feel it isn't my negative, it's just what a great capturing that was of something, you know. I'm glad to see you. Zarkowski's arrival marked the beginning of long hours of intensive work. Out of what I have, out of what I have, 
I would like one of those walls to be centered and to speak about my own life here on this place. It's a great thing to decide where you live. It's a great thing. This is the photographer's environment. It started by being a, you know, I had that home is where. Well, where is it, you know? It's a very deep and complicated subject, especially a family like ours, which is, for want of a better word, I'd say, irregular and extended. We've lived in this house since 1941, I think. And many have grown up here, left here, and returned here with their families. This could be an attempt to describe an environment. That's what it is, an attempt to describe an environment. But if I, if I say it's the photographer's environment, then I, I blame myself wide open, which I like to do. You know, I like to do that rather than, than probe into other people's environment. You start with your own, and you can only do it in others if you have been able to do it in your own. You really believe in that kind of personal risk taking? Yeah, I do. At my age and in my situation, it's the only chance in the you ever get, oh my God, here he comes. <gasps> Dorothea's husband, Paul Taylor, tried to keep Dorothea on some kind of schedule for both medication and even more difficult eating. We'll get these on the wall first. She didn't drink enough yesterday. A woman with that apple pie, she was my neighbor, and there was a well-beaten path between our kitchen door and her kitchen door next door. And it's now no longer there because she's been gone 10 years. But she held my home together in, for me when my boys were in high school and I was in the hospital for weeks and weeks and weeks. She held it together for us. Now, uh, let me have the one. I don't want that up. Would you like me to, uh, would it be helpful if, in any way if I reacted to these things without, sure. without having any that? personal, you know, before sure. leave? What sure. Sure. Personally? Of course. Of course. Beautiful. You know, They'll be all and right. Big and they should really, and nothing should compete with them. They'll make. Beautiful. No. No, all right. Uh, no. No. I don't like no. that one. No? No. Okay. I don't think so. All right, I'm willing. I'm willing. Provided go and go back over it, I don't find that it's getting sterile, you know. Well, this is just quick. Good, quick but I agree with everything you said. Reaction. I agree with that. Yes, maybe, yes, yes, and these three, no. Right, okay. Uh, beautiful. Okay. I don't know. I, I, but that's a I'm, personal I'm, thing with me. The, the crown of a child's head mm -hmm. is said one most wonderful yeah. spot. This one, yes. yes, and that one, no. yes. And that one, I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've got to have that okay. one. <laughs> yes, mm. I don't know. I couldn't live without having all of those. No, I couldn't. That one of Gregor running is, if I took it out, it would violate something around this place because that is almost a motif. Underneath those three trees is a beautiful statement. Just those three. It's a beautiful statement. Do you, can you see that? I can. Just as they're on the wall there. Mm -hmm. And those others are big enough. And the dark, the big dark one. In that case, it would be two trees, not three. What? Oh, I think. Well, maybe not, but I think. I don't mean the same thing. I don't even, I'm just playing with it now. We're, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I think I can build it, build more out of it. But okay. 
Should we go on? Yeah. What I want to do now is to decide from all of these which have an Irish mood to them, where it really resides the best, and how I can find the quality that I would like to maintain through it. Something, John, like the quality of the Asian ones, which is different from anything else on the walls. I'm a little lost here. I am too. I, I, I shouldn't I'm a little lost. You better sit down and quit, because it's confusing to have them come up and come down, come up and come down. We better let this one, maybe put this one away and go back to it. Okay, with these prints. Put the whole thing away, the selected prints, and come back to it because I don't think, I don't think I'm making it. Tell me, for what reason one takes photographs? And it was just so surround. That wasn't the word, but it was a good word. A person, you know, really wanting to know what the dickens you're doing with a camera when you stand in a strange country surrounded by people you don't, nothing that you understand. What are you doing there for the love of God with a camera? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a fair question. You know, there is a big difference between what you choose out of travel when time has elapsed and what you immediately choose. Memory enters into it. The things that I would put on a wall now from Asia, and the things that I picked when I first came home from Asia, utterly different. Curious. I would like to produce an exhibit. People's minds might be stirred, not by the variety of things that I have looked at, but by the Im immense variety and richness of human life. This is not the final step this at all. This is, this is the sort of discovering what the core of this woman's work's about. I'm sure that this idea takes not only working out, but some reworking. I've gone through this kind of a process before, but I have always, most of the time, done it alone. I think that wall is about something. I mean, that collection is about something. It shows an interest in human life. I think it does, doesn't it? Or am I kidding myself? See, that's my bad dream. That's my nightmare. What? Am I kidding myself? Am I kidding myself? I don't only mean photographically, but... See, it started by being death and disaster, by which I meant all kinds of death. I didn't mean sudden and violent death. I mean, I meant death by inches. And that was more than I could deliver on. That was more. A news photographer could do a great one on that. Then the word, one day I was working here, and it came to me. The deprived and the dislocated. And then the word came to me, rootless and helpless. And then the phrase that's used by, I think the sociologists use it, the walking wounded. There was another phrase that was in my mind, the last ditch, the last ditch. Now this group of pictures is just like all my groups of pictures, that just suggest the possibilities of this medium. It's all I hope ever to do with this show or anything, not to uh, achieve it, but to suggest it to someone else to carry it on. And that I think this wall might do. I'm not, it's, I'm not doing it in terms of achievement. I feel it in terms of possibilities, provocation, because 
Well, you've heard me say it often enough. The possibilities of this medium is... We're just on the threshold of it. And I'd like to give it a push, slight push. But on the final wall is something that I'm not sure I have the materials of. But this I have to work on. And that is a wall on the New California. This is the unfinished business. And this is the one where I could not demonstrate, but suggest the possibility of this medium in revealing the passage of time and what happens in it. I would say this new California is one for someone else to finish. I would love to work in it. I would really love to work in it. I can't, but I can start it. Your viewer, and he's a very mysterious person, uh, you have to keep him in mind always, too. And you don't know him. When he looks at such a wall on relationships, what my hope would be that he would say to himself, oh, yes, I know what she meant. I never thought of it. I never paid attention to it. Or something like, I've seen that a thousand times. But won't miss it again. Won't miss it again. You've told about the familiar, the understood, but in, in calling attention to what it holds, you have added to your viewers confidence or his understanding. And the most complimentary thing, in my opinion, that anyone could ever say to you is, I saw something today that you would have liked. Then you know you've reached him. National Educational Television Network.